Hello and welcome to this training video on introduction to the KQL. KQL stands for Custo Query Language, which is a powerful query language to query the data to perform the analysis from various Azure services. Well, if you are looking for skills to perform the data analysis in Azure, then you are in the right place. Let's get started with this training video. My name is Navneet Kumar and I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer. The learning objectives of this training video are, what is KQL? Why shall we care about it? Basic KQL query examples and the statements. First thing first, what is KQL? KQL is a powerful read-only query language that is primarily used for querying the large volumes of data, be it structured, partially structured or unstructured data within the Azure Data Explorer, Azure Monitor, Application Insights or Log Analytics workspaces. It allows the users to retrieve, analyze and visualize the data quickly and efficiently. This is optimized for large data sets. KQL is designed to handle the massive amount of data with low latency responses. This makes it idle for analyzing the logs, telemetry, and time series data. It has rich data analysis features. It supports advanced filtering, sorting, aggregation, joining data from multiple sources, and many more. The KQL includes built-in functions for complex calculations and time series analysis. This makes it highly powerful for data analysis purpose. This offers flexible query structure KQL's syntax is quite intuitive. It is almost similar as SQL with some differences. It allows users to easily perform the data exploration, trend analysis, and anomaly detections. It is known for its simple yet powerful query structure, which combines the commands like where, summarize, project, join, union to interact with the data. Integration with Azure tools is Another key advantage of it, KQL is used across various Azure services like I mentioned earlier, like Azure Monitor, Microsoft Sentinel, Application Insight, and Log Analytics workspaces. This is ideal for data professionals, data analysts, engineers, and professionals working in the cloud environments can get benefit from the KQL as it provides a streamlined way to work with large data sets. It can automate the data-driven workflows and can help you creating the real-time dashboards to have a single pane of glass, also referred as SPOG. Why learn KQL? So the question is, where we have already a lot of query languages, why shall we care about KQL or why shall we learn it? KQL is especially designed to be fast and efficient for querying and analyzing the logs, telemetry data, metrics, and other types of time series data. It is widely used by the data professionals, engineers, SOC analysts that are working in the cloud environment, especially in Microsoft Azure. This is optimized for large scale data. KQL is specially designed to handle the massive data sets and time series data efficiently, and especially in the cloud environments like Azure. It offers the high performance querying for real time log analysis and telemetry. This makes it ideal for large scale operations. It offers the real time analysis. Unlike many traditional query languages, KQL is optimized for real time data analysis. This is essential for monitoring the application's infrastructure, quickly responding to any anomalous behavior. The Azure ecosystem integration is another key advantage of it. KQL can seamlessly integrate with Azure services like Data Explorer, Azure Monitor, Application Insights. This allows the users to work within a unified platform. Simplicity and readability is another advantage. KQL has the intuitive syntax, which is SQL-like syntax. I will put a reference link of SQL to KQL cheat sheet in the description of this video, where you can compare the two and you can use your SQL skills 
to learn the KQL. Its query structure is very clear and concise. It helps users quickly perform the complex queries without any steep learning curve. In the next uh, slide, you will see an example where you will find that how clear and concise the syntax of KQL is. It can perform the time series data analysis in a focused manner. This is especially focused about it. As I mentioned that KQL is especially designed for the large data sets. So it also can become easier to query the time series data. It makes it an excellent choice for analyzing the logs, metrics or the telemetry data. These are some of the key uh, factors for monitoring the cloud services and diagnosing and troubleshooting these services. Advanced analytical features are there. KQL provides a rich set of functions and the operators to perform the complex aggregations of data, joining or putting the data from different uh, tables and the calculations across this data. This advanced functionality allows for the deep insights into your data with a relatively simple query structure. Next benefit is scalable and cost effective. KQL queries are highly efficient and optimized for the cloud environments. This provides the better performance at scale. This can reduce the infrastructure cost as well. Security and compliance. Since the KQL is deeply integrated into Azure services, it benefits from the security and compliance standards also that Microsoft enforces for its cloud platforms. This makes it trustworthy option for enterprise data analysis. Here is an example of a basic KQL query. In this example, you will see the first line that has security event as the table name to query. There is no select or from statement here, unlike uh, SQL, we use those statements. So this makes it clear and concise that you put directly the table name that you want to collect the data from. In case you are looking to select specific properties, then you can use project command that you see at the line number five. Where operator is there to do the filtering. Whereas after the where there is the object properties or the table column that you want to uh, collect the data from, then the operator, your comparison operators, logical operators, you put them and then you provide the data. You can summarize to aggregate the data by a specific property of the objects as well. Well, these are just a couple of lines to understand the structure of this query language. We will explore the basic uh, operators, commands of the KQL in the next video. I hope this was informative to you. Thanks for watching and subscribe the channel if you have not subscribed yet for more videos. Thank you.